My name is Josh Garcia. I'm a level designer here at Ubisoft Toronto, and I came from Ubisoft Next in 2019. I took game design at Sheridan College. And I went through a four year program there, um, which uh, led me here. When you hear that there's a large studio that you're kind of going to, and you have to meet all these people, and people might not know who you are, but the team that I was introduced to that had 20 to 30 people, um, everyone was so welcoming, being like, oh, nice to meet you, we saw your submission. There was always an element where people wanted you to feel that you were a part of a team instantly. And that was like a huge change moment for me. So seeing the submissions and being a judge this year, it's gonna be very interesting seeing it from the other side of the table since uh, there was a lot of things that I learned uh, when I had the opportunity to talk with a lot of my peers about what my submission uh, was. And honestly, I'm really excited to see some of the creativity that we, have, uh, that we see this year. I'm Jessica Lee. I'm a technical artist here at Ubisoft Toronto in the Cinematics Department, and I competed in Next about a year ago in April 2021. Next really set me up for my career in game development, first of all by giving me an opportunity to take all the skills that I learned from school and apply it into one project. Uh, my advice for someone starting Next this year is to talk to your peers. Like, I was in a really good community where we like to bounce ideas off each other. And even being outside of Next now, you can make so many connections. To be honest, a lot of the stuff that I'm doing at Ubisoft Toronto is completely new. It's stuff that I didn't learn a lot of in school, and so I get to learn a lot of new things. But now that I work in cinematics, I have appreciation for how long it takes to make it good, um, that I will no longer be skipping the cutscenes when I play video games. I think the impact of Next when people participate is so valuable. I don't think you can get it anywhere else. To be able to connect with so many students across Ontario on one specific project is amazing.
I'm David and I'm a gameplay animator at Ubisoft Toronto. I joined Next uh, five years ago for animation. I think like I heard like whispers about it around campus, but at first I figured like, oh, me versus all of Ontario, why bother? I'm not gonna try. Then uh, at some point, some Ubisoft devs came by the campus to talk about it and uh, it just snowballed from there. I feel like I'm just proud of getting here. Like as a kid, I never expected like I could do video games as a job. And then uh, like I went straight from school right into Ubisoft because of Next. My favorite work I did so far is definitely like the spider drone animations in Watch Dogs. I love like animating little critters and stuff and little creatures. So that was definitely like a lot of fun to put together. Oh, Next was basically the reason I'm like able to like get into the whole industry. I don't know, like I figured, okay, risk reward. Worst thing that happens, I don't get very far and I'll have something cool put on my demo reel. Uh, best case scenario, I'll be here in this chair at Ubisoft five years later telling people to just take the shot. Toronto's next 2022 awards and I'm your host Mia Mahinai and thank you so much for joining us for this show. So we got a lot to cover. We're gonna go over the finalist reels. We're gonna hear from our judges and their expertise and of course announce this year's winners. But first we want to hear you in chat so let us know where you're tuning in from or you want better yet let me hear who you are supporting. Is it your bestie? Is it your family member? Or maybe you're the froth that's super stoked to see their students work on screen. But whatever it is, we all know that the best crowds are the ones that always cheer. So continuously show your support in chat. So in the next little bit, like I said, we're gonna go over six different disciplines. So we're gonna go over, we're gonna hear all the judges, see all the work and essentially just celebrate what this next generation of talent is. And so to get things kicked off, grab a snack, grab a drink, because we're going to hear from our managing director, Isfan Tajne. Okay, so let's get right into it. So uh, you have been at the studio since February 2021. And how has it been for you? And what has the studio been up to recently? Well, it's definitely been intense, exciting, inspiring, and challenging at the same time. Um, you know, really uh, um, in the last stretch to shipping a, a game of the magnitude of, of Far Cry 6. Um, but we've done that in a very good way. And uh, we're now also on a, on a very dyna dynamic uh, momentum, a uh, very positive one, uh, having announced Plinto Cell and hearing some really, really uh, good feedback from the community about it. Um, and talking about great momentum, Ubisoft Toronto was recently recognized as Studio of the Year at the Canadian Game Awards. It's, uh, it's, it's incredible. It's uh, very, very well deserved um, for our entire team. I'm very proud of the Far Cry 6 team for having delivered a strong game in extraordinary circumstances. And I'm really excited with the direction that we're taking um, with Remake and Splinter Cell. And we got some 
other unannounced things in store at the studio that uh, that I'm also very, very excited about. So exciting. Yes, congrats to the studio and congrats to the team. Um, and maybe hear about, you know, some of the next winners will have an apprenticeship. And so what can they look out for here at Ubisoft Yo? Um, well, we're always looking at how we can improve our, our workplace culture and improve the benefits that we offer and the environment we offer to make sure that you know, Ubisoft Toronto is a place where employees can come and grow and learn a lot, a lot of things and also build their careers for the long term. So uh, um, that includes a lot of uh, um, a lot of flexibility and different ways of working and different ways of managing your working lives. And uh, uh, you know, what I find very exciting for myself and for for people that join the studio is. Uh, is, is precisely that flexibility. We now have the option uh, to work fully from home or obviously fully from the studio or a hybrid of both uh, in a very flexible way. Um, we're offering everyone uh, from day one, six weeks holidays. Um, we've improved our, our parental leave program. I think we're really industry leading now. Um, and uh, we're also very conscious about uh, the, the, the work-life balance sustainability. So we've put a policy in place that ensures that all employees can disconnect fully when the workday is over, only to, uh, you know, to get back to it the next day. But uh, it's something we, we really you know, pride ourselves on and think is very, very important to, you know, to win the long-term marathon that is game development. And so I guess with that being said, what are your, what are your hopes and dreams for Ubisoft Toronto? You know, what kind of games do you see us making? My hopes and dreams are, uh, you know, always reflected in the, in the games that we make. So as I already mentioned, we want to bring Sl Splinter Cell back where it belongs into the spotlight. And uh, we're going to do it using the Snowdrop engine and we're going to make it beautiful and, uh, and really push the envelope technically. Uh, we're also going to continue to build upon our expertise in creating high quality open world action adventure games um, and we're going to do all that while really considering very carefully um, on how how we can make great games with more agility more flexibility and less friction um, and i do believe that the snowdrop engine will be key in allowing us to, to achieve that i want to hear from you what is your advice for students who are now starting out their own careers, potentially from Next. And so with that being said, what, what is the impact too for students participating in programs like Next? Well, my advice to students would be to, to really apply your theoretical knowledge and put it in practice as much as you can. And, you know, through uh, personal game projects, creating assets, uh, uh, adding to your portfolio, uh, it, it doesn't really matter what it is, but by doing as much as you can and putting your, your knowledge, your skills into practice, um, the experience you'll acquire in solving visual design and tech problems is really priceless. And uh, video game development is very much a, a, a practical art. So, uh, and it'll give you something to showcase, showcase your skills. So that's always great. Um, and for me, Next, what's really fantastic about Next is it, it gives students the, the opportunity to put their work in front of seasoned game development professionals for advice, perspective, feedback. And it's a super interesting way for us to ad identify young talent. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what this talent brings. Enjoy the show. Let's give a warm welcome to our campus lead, Tanvi, who has put a tremendous amount of work into the next program. How are you, Tanvi? Are you excited for the show? So excited to be here, and thank you so much to everyone who's joining us today. Amazing. So I want to learn more about you. So what is your role at Ubisoft Toronto? Yeah, so I lead the campus programs at our studio, which includes coordinating all of our competitions, including Next, managing our relationships with uh, post-secondary institutions, also hiring all of our interns and new grads. And interestingly, I started about eight months ago, right as we were announcing this year's next competition. Eight months ago, oh my goodness. Okay, so can you describe what it was like to you know, plan next from then until now and how we got here? 
Yeah, for sure. And before I get into the timelines, you know, let's let's talk about what the program itself is. So next is our marquee annual competition for students and new grads who are interested in kickstarting their career at a AAA game studio such as ours. And it was started with the intention of engaging directly with post-secondary students and new grads, creating a platform for them to showcase their work and also creating an exciting avenue for us to hire our early career talent. Um, majority of our new grads are hired from Next and they have made some amazing contributions within the studio. We will actually get a chance to watch the journey of a few of them later in the ceremony. And the success stories are not just within the studio. We have also seen participants start their own studios or even go into our global graduate program. So just overall for everyone who takes part, it is a terrific opportunity to get their work in front of industry experts and receive feedback directly from them. Um, I will, you know, I'll start with the timeline first in terms of what the process looked like when I started. Um, so the competition is launched in fall every year and the deadline is usually around mid-March, which means the students have close to eight months to work on their submission. And then once we receive all of the submissions in March, the judges panels review all the applicants and they shortlist the finalists who then go through an interview with the judges. Um, from there, we decide who the winners are and those winners will start their apprenticeship by the end of May this year. So to give you some insight into the judging process, the campus team is really involved in the discussions with all of the judges and each submission is reviewed in great detail and we make sure the decisions are aligned to the criteria provided in the brief for each discipline. Um, the judges were of course very impressed with the quality of uh, submissions that we received this year. It was a fierce competition and we could see how the small details are making all the difference in deciding who the finalists are and who the winners are going to be. So that's what the whole process looks like in a nutshell. Wow, that sounds like a robust process. It definitely sounds like a great opportunity for students. That is amazing with all the success that's happened from the next program. Mm -hmm. um, so with that being said, then I guess, so once I go through this process and we selected our winners, um, I know uh, some of them, they actually get a, an apprenticeship if they win. And so I know myself, I actually started at Ubisoft Toronto as an intern. I've loved my experience and now I'm working here full time and it's amazing. And so can you uh, take us through kind of what it looks like for a student who gets an apprenticeship here at Ubisoft Toronto? Yeah, for sure. So I would say Next is just a starting point um, and the finalists can vouch for the valuable feedback that they receive during the interview process. And that is the kind of involvement that they will see from their managers and their buddies and their mentors during their apprenticeship. Um, so in addition to the exposure that they receive, they also go through a formal soft skills and technical skills training program for their development. And they also get the opportunity to give back and engage with all of the programs and partnerships that we run within the studio. So there are plenty of opportunities for overall career growth. Thank you so much, Tanvi, for your time. But we want to get this show started. So we'll see you again at the end. Starting us off with out of the six disciplines, we got concept art. And I'm here with Bronco, one of the judges for concept art. I'm super excited to get this going. Bronco, I've heard you've been here for quite a while and you've probably also been part of Next for just as long. Can you walk us through what that was like? Hey Mia, hello everyone. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, yeah, I've been with Ubisoft uh, TO for about uh, 11 years going now. And uh, with Next, since the inception of it, um, and every year is a challenge, and every year is extremely gratifying. Uh, we get a chance to present a problem for students who then, you know, avariciously jump at it and hopefully come up with stuff that impresses us. And almost always, or always, they do. Basically, every year, every year comes with a like a whole slew of gratification once we see the contestants and the uh, and the finalists. And this year has been no different. So I'm very happy. That is awesome. And so, can you tell us more about what is concept art? Yeah, so concept art is basically the first visual iteration of uh, of what the production wants to see. So, for instance, an art director comes to us and requests, you know, like an underwater submarine that then also transforms into like a shark. And uh, how do we then make that also fly if we needed to? Then they go away and we sketch out a bunch of ideas and uh, go back to the go back to them and present it. And then they uh, they either approve it and if they do, they they present it to the rest of the team who then go along and 
create that in production and therefore we have a game, a movie, whatever, or they present it and pitch it to the other art directors or the other directors or HQ to come up with the overall concept of uh, the game or the world. That is awesome. What I took away from that is you guys have like the biggest imagination for this job and I am here for it. But without further ado, while we actually take a look at the finalist reels, can you let us know what mission you gave our students for this competition? Yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to. So um, every year since the very beginning of, of this uh, competition, we've struggled with how much information we should give the, con the artists and how much information we should omit to see how much they can actually flex their own creative muscle. We don't want to really stifle their ability to like show us what they got, right? And um, this year has been no different. We, uh, we decided to go with an Art Nouveau theme. Uh, it's uh, basically a murder setting within a cafe or wherever they want to, whatever time period, relatively speaking, um, just to see what they come up with. And Art Nouveau has a certain aesthetic flow that's very singular, very particular. It's both organic while also being architectural. It's hard to balance. And then you throw in lighting, you throw in color, you throw in texture. We wanted to see how they could balance it all out and uh, make a pleasant picture from it. And we were, we were quite happy with uh, some of the results we got this year. But let's take a look at the finalists who have submitted things for this year's competition. And why don't you tell us more about what it was that you asked from them? What was their mission? Sure, yeah, yeah, I'd be happy to. So yeah, in third place, we have Pei Yang, who, uh, who did an excellent job, especially when it comes to the atmosphere of the piece. That's actually what caught us. It was the fact that when you were when you're fresh and you start in concept art, uh, you generally push the darks and lights, the contrast, because it's so eye-catching. But uh, in this case, this submission really, really tried to actually omit that. And instead, it introduced a lot of atmosphere and, it's, and it introduced this one directional strong light and the rest is rather floating. It's almost like a somber piece. You can look at it and feel like you can kind of get lost in the silence of the piece, right? So it was very impressive. Well done, Peyang. And now in the second place, we have Don, who we feel did an excellent job when it comes to nailing the Art Nouveau architecture we asked for. It's a it's a difficult, as mentioned, a difficult sort of style. It's not uh it's not often replicated in video games or even in modern you know modern movies. But uh but I feel like they nailed it very well. And on top of that, they also they also really balanced the textures and everything else so that the piece, even though there's a lot of detail in here, it's a uh, it's actually you know, it's actually pleasant to look at. It's very easy to make a scene look messy when you have so much texture, so much detail. So really well done, uh, Don, uh, really well done. Cheers. And for our winner, Jackson, um, well, Jackson basically, they they basically came the closest to nailing our pitch that we could have asked. We, as I mentioned earlier, we omitted a certain amount of information to see what the concept artist comes up with because we want to see how they think we want to see how they problem solve and jackson did a great job of presenting us what we wanted um, while also in interjecting here a little more a greater sense of story a little more mystery um, also going off uh, off a very rather complex lighting scene and composition and kind of rebalancing everything so all in all it's a uh, it's a piece that that both impressed us and surprised us and we're actually really looking forward to working with Jackson because as a student, if they're at this stage, we'd like to see, I, I, I personally, and I know the rest of the judges would love to see how they grow. So well done, Jackson. Well done, all three of you. Great work. Wow, and there you have it. Thank you so much, Bronco. And now I'm going to pass it on to our winner for this year, Jackson. Hey guys, I'm Katrin, or you may address me as Jackson. I'm so excited and honored when I first thought about the news of me being the winner as there are a lot of amazing and talented artists out there. Honestly, I never thought that I would come this far. And also congrats to those other finalists as well. I've seen all your work, those are incredible. You all should feel very proud of yourself. And yes, regarding about the, the challenge this year, it is so much more different compared to the previous, previous year one. As this year, uh, the brief is so much more open-ended and there are a lot of uncertainty about it. So for me, for my design, I feel like the biggest challenge is to find out the, the missing pieces to, to complete the brief. And in my design, I try to incorporate Alchemist into the storyline. As the brief suggests, the theme should be urban fantasy. And I feel like Alchemist is something that is not too flashy such as pure magic is a lot more grounded and and has a lot of urban elements to it so i feel like this would be a good fit for the for the story and also for my victim i try to design her as noticeable as possible because i feel like in in a game in this scale 
you have to make something as eye-catching such as the subject and just to imagine you are the player and you go into a scene you just want to just want to catch that right away so i feel like everything just worked out so perfectly i'm just so grateful that that i am the, I'm the winner <laughs> On to the next one, we got 3D art, and I'm joined here with Amanda, one of our judges for 3D art. Hello, Amanda. I'm super Hello. stoked to see all the work and hear more about it. Amanda, I heard this was actually your first next competition. What is yeah. what has that been like? Uh, it's honestly been so awesome. I mean, like I've been present at previous next competitions to you know uh, come down and see the winners and kind of congratulate everyone and cheer on the awesome work but this is my first time actually being uh involved and like directly engaging with the students and it's honestly been so inspiring like the work it's like chef's kiss oh love um, a chef's kiss <laughs> with that being said what is 3d art as a general definition uh 3d art is any art that you uh, create using specialized software to uh, kind of replicate objects or scenes in three dimensions um for me specifically, like my focus is uh, 3D art in the context of world building and, and, and level art. Uh, so for me, I uh, create the components of a scene inside specialized software um, and then assemble that later in, in a game engine where uh, you know players can jump in, walk around and kind of interact with uh, the stuff in the scene. Oh, super good, super good. All the good stuff in a game that makes it feel so good. Yeah, um, five so senses. <laughs> there, <laughs> there you have it. So we're actually going to play uh, a reel of the finalist work. And while we do that, can you walk us through what it was that you asked from the students? So what was their brief? What was their mission? What were they asked to do for this competition? <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, this year was pretty cool. We got a little spooky, a little scary, a little surreal. Um, and we asked students to create uh, a diorama attic scene uh, kind of around this idea of like a haunted sewing machine. Uh, so we have our, you know, hypothetical protagonist, little Billy, who uh, has been having nightmares about this sewing machine. And we're asking uh, our participants to kind of create uh, a scene through the prism of his nightmare of this haunted object. Uh, so there are a lot of really cool opportunities for uh, artists to get crazy and kind of go a little abstract and, you know, include like distortion and anomalous gravity and just like flickering lights and, you know, every, everything you think of when you think of eerie horror. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I am not a spooky gamer, but I'm sure they nailed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And with that being said, let's talk about the winners for this year's 3D art. Yeah. Amanda, take us on that journey. Third place, we have Saper. And the thing that really stuck out about Saper's work was the environment that they created really felt like a real game environment. So we were really impressed with the scope of the space. And we were really impressed with uh, their use of scale. So it was a, it was an environment that we felt that we could walk around in. Uh, there was really good prop density, like really good use of uh, like interesting props uh, dressed in the space. Amazing. And what about second place? Yeah. So in second place, we have Mitchell. And Mitchell's submission was something that stuck out to the judges as being the highest level of consistent technical finesse. Uh, from their model quality to their materials to their lighting, their clean normal back map bakes, uh, you know, from silhouettes right down to micro details, everything was just really good. Like there wasn't a single thing that we could point at and say, well, that needs more polish. It's, it didn't. It was all polished. <laughs> the winner this year, drum roll, is Ryan. Uh, so the thing that immediately captivated uh, the judges in Ryan's submission was a striking, evocative, uh, cinematic mood they created. Uh, so they really leaned onto the narrative aspects of the brief and created something uh, like really cool, really unique piece, which is actually two separate pieces that kind of contrast one another in, uh, in terms of tone. Um, it's clear from the submission that Ryan has a really good eye for composition and color theory, lighting, attention to detail, just everything was uh, high quality. And there it is. Thank you so much, Amanda, for joining us. Congratulations, Ryan. And let's hear from you now. Hello, everyone. My name is Ryan Honey, and I'm a graduate from Durham College in the Game Art Program. 
I am ecstatic over hearing the results of the contest and am happy to be selected as winner. The quality of work from my fellow contestants was astounding. I am grateful for having been a part of this challenge with so many other skilled artists. The scene I've made for the challenge came from a place of wanting to create something cinematic, something that told a story. Environmental storytelling is a powerful tool that lets an artist convey mood, interest, and a narrative through visuals alone. A powerful tool in the hands of a developer. I imagine the scene from being the, from the perspective of a child, as noted in the written prompt, and all of the nostalgia and wonder that comes with being a kid. I wanted to convey that feeling visually for the viewer and then flip it on its head to create feelings of unease and concern that a child's bad dream or nightmare might have and the surreal quality of a child's dream. I used lighting and camera techniques to achieve this feeling in my environment. I hope I can continue to learn about techniques such as these as I move into my apprenticeship. I am very excited to receive the offer. I am looking forward to continuing my learning and owning my skills at Ubisoft to make quality content for people to watch or play and enjoy. I want to take this opportunity to also thank the people in my life that gave me the love and guidance to compete in the challenge this year. I want to thank my friends, my professors, my mentors, and my classmates. I also want to thank my mother, my family, and my partner. I would also like to thank the Ubisoft team for this opportunity. Cheers. On to another exciting discipline. We are at animation and I'm joined here with one of our judges, Santi. And now Santi's actually been a next judge for the past two years. So Santi, tell us, how has it been being a part of next? Great, uh, I love that. Uh, I think it's great to see uh, the new the new people that are coming into the industry, uh, meeting them, talking to them, understanding their struggles and, and, and how they're trying to get into this industry, which is uh, it's hard. Uh, but it was great meeting them as well in person and talking to them and seeing uh, how they went on uh, uh, into the brief and what the thought process was and you know, how they planned for it and everything. It's amazing, yeah, like, I love um, doing this. Amazing, and so I know a lot of us know about animation, maybe a little bit, maybe a lot, but Santi, I want you to describe a little more, what is animation? Uh, it's the, I mean, it's the art of uh, infusing in life into uh, characters, uh, robots, anything. So uh, people think about that, oh, we're just moving things around, but it's a whole deal more than that. It's, it's trying to give life to things that don't have a personality. Uh, also in games in particular, we, we also work on the gameplay side, which is creating animations that control our players and that give the response to the actual player at home. Of course, I think it's a huge deal to give life to, of course, a thing in a game and a show, everything. And so we're actually going to play a reel of all the finalists. And while we look at take a look at those, can you tell us more about what it is that you asked the students this year to animate? Yeah, we gave them a very open brief uh, versus uh, what we've done in the previous years. Uh, we just gave them a word, uh, the word was bump. And we did it on purpose to allow the most freedom for them to choose their themes and plan their scenes and come up like, we, we were excited to see what people would come up with with such a broad uh, idea. Awesome, and now we are excited, super excited to know who were the winners and who bumped themselves up to first place? Santi, tell us more about the winners this year. In third place, we have uh, Nin Yu. Uh, we were impressed that uh, someone uh, would take this approach of uh, animating a character in a drunk walk, which is pretty hard uh, in and of itself. But uh, they did a great job with the timing, the rhythm of the walk, and then the resolution towards the end, also including a car passing by with startled the, the reason why she kind of bumps into the other character in the scene. In second place, we have Daniel. Daniel's piece impressed us by, uh, for the use of body mechanics and the understanding of the uh, idea of weight and how he managed to infuse this in the, in the weight of the suitcase. Also, it was a kind of off-the-cuff uh, setting with the airport situation and the lady that's like on her phone kind of thing. And uh, our last one, the winner of this year's uh, next competition, 
Yu Sheng. Uh, Yu Sheng's piece is uh, kind of we all fell in love uh, from the very beginning. I think uh, all, all the judges in the competition. Uh, there's a lot of good stuff in this in this submission. There's the contrast of the characters with the big monster and the little girl. The little addition of, of flashes of 2D animation in there. That the, also the differences in, in character of the motion between the two, the, with the slow motion of the big guy and the kind of chirpiness of the little girl. So uh, yeah, it was, it was a great piece. Santi, thank you so much for taking us through that. Congratulations to all the winners. I personally loved all of those animations. They're so nice. And now we'll hear from our winner for this year for animation. Hi, my name is Yu Xing, and I'm honored to be selected as the winner for the Ubisoft Next Animation Challenge 2022. This year's theme has inspired me to make something new and fun, and I decided to go with the trick or treat scene. It was very challenging at the beginning because it's hard to get the energy of the child just right, and I spent a lot of time studying the references and doing the blocking and re-blocking a few times, but it was worth the time because I have learned a lot from the process and I like how it turned out. I would like to thank Ubisoft for giving me this opportunity to work here, and I would also like to give my special thanks to my partner, to my parents, and the people who helped me along the way. Thank you. And on to another great discipline, technical art. I'm here with Sean, one of the judges for this discipline. Sean, are you excited about the show? I've actually heard you've been at Ubisoft for quite a while, but this is your first time as a next judge. Tell me, how has that experience been? It is, and it has been a pleasure. Uh, one thing that I absolutely love about looking at student work is that I just find it inspiring. Um, they're not necessarily industry professionals and seasoned vets, but they always bring something unique to the table. Students always have an amazing energy and passion for what they do. So it's been fun. That's so great to hear, Sean. And so there's a question I've been wanting to know, and maybe you can just tell us more. What is technical art? So that is a very good question. Uh, Basically, technical artists, we are mad scientists. We are curious, we like to learn. At the heart of it, we're essentially bridges between the creative disciplines and the technical discipline being engineering and programming. Uh, technical art at the very core is problem solving. So it's really about finding elegant solutions that help solve various challenges that creatives will encounter along the process for creating or realizing an artistic or other type of creative vision. Amazing. So let's take a look at the finalist reel. And while we do that, can you tell us more about what it was that you asked for the students participating in the technical art challenge? Absolutely. So this year, what we did was we tried to pair the technical art challenge with the 3D art challenge. So we have the sewing machine that we've all grown to know and love. Um, the big difference between the technical art challenge, it's really about how you did things and why you did things. So we're looking at sort of the, the list of challenges that you, incur, you, you encounter along the path of creating your content. And we really want to get an idea of how, uh, how much understanding you have of the approaches that you applied, as well as why you applied that approach. What other approach did you apply? So we're really interested in that journey uh, for creating it. So getting a bit more into the brief, um, it's the uh, sewing machine in the attic. It's really about um, the mood, understanding like the fear and an anxiety and all of the, the sort of context. One reason that's important for technical artists, the process is that it's important to understand the context of the art that we're creating, regardless of what the technical issue is. This will help empower technical artists to build the best solution uh, for the problem. We've all been waiting for this moment. Take us through who the top two is for technical art this year. So first off, I really want to say thank you for all the submissions. It was very difficult to pr choose the final submission. Uh, every It's clear that all of the applicants understood the assignment and they understood the technical art challenge. So in second place, we have William. One thing that really stuck about out, stuck out about William's work is that there's a really large variety of techniques 
Um, definitely use tutorials, but he really elevated the approach. So it's clear that there was understanding of what the tutorials were bringing to the table. And then a lot of parts of the submission, the tutorials were sort of mixed and matched and, and sort of um, uh, built to build something new. So there was definitely a, a good show of innovation in the solution. And artistically, it was it's pretty strong as well. So it's much appreciated. In first place, we have UN. So UN is, is very, very close. And so one thing that really stuck out about UN's uh, submission is really the detail, the elegance, and the planning. So one thing that really uh, hit us both um, uh, for reviewing the submission was that even in cases when his submission wasn't quite as optimal as it needed to be, he definitely had a nice like write-up and detail of how it could be improved and how it could be optimized. Another thing that really stuck out about the submission was uh, the elegance on how well that could be scaled uh, to maybe give to an art team. So like right off the bat, looking at the submission, it's, it's like maybe with a little work, we could build a book generator for the attic and we could give that to the art team and, and really popular level. So it's really excelled in the area of world building elegance. Well, and you heard it from Sean, the students understood the assignment, and now I'm super excited to bring on screen Yuan. Hi everyone, my name is Yuan Chen, otherwise known as Jerry, and I'm really uh, honored to be selected as this year's tech art winner. Um, my project was actually inspired by Ubisoft Toronto's own games, specifically with their huge scale and open worlds. Um, I wanted to create a tool that could easily generate the thousands or more addicts that could fill such a world like that. Um, of course, this came with lots of considerations and problems like performance, uh, variability between addicts, as well as the flexibility and ease of use for artists and designers. I've been making games casually uh, in my free time with my friends over the last couple of years, so I'm really excited to see finally what it's like at a, a professional AAA game studio. Um, lastly, I'd like to thank some people who helped me along the way and supported me. Um, in no particular order, including Joseph, Daniel, Kevin, Jerry, Victor, Justin, Mo, Corey, Lynn, Jeff, my mom and my dad, my sister Amy, and my dog Toby. And of course, thanks to Ubisoft Toronto for this great opportunity. Bye. Level design. We are on to another exciting discipline, and I have one of our judges here, Anish. Anish, it's your first time being a judge on Next, and how has that experience been for you? It is my first time. It's been quite exciting to see uh, the students create their locations from our briefs. I'm always amazed with how quickly they came up with them uh, and the, the level of expertise they show at such an early level in their careers. Awesome. And so before we get into it and see all their work, can you explain to us what is level design in gaming? Level design is a, like being building with Legos. You have all the different departments that provide you with the different blocks from animation, audio, coal, and then we put them together to create our end user experiences like uh, missions, locations, and activities that the player can take part in. Great, so let's take a look at the reel of all the work from our finalists. And while that plays, can you tell us what it was that you asked the students this year when competing in level design? So this year we went away from uh, asking for open world locations and we went for more of a stealth gameplay experience because of course we do have that uh, stealth franchise in Splinter Cell and we wanted to gear the next competition towards that. <laughs> So in third place, we have Mauricio. They created a Mexican mansion of sorts that was based on a real life location. Included their own stealth gameplay mechanic with night vision goggles. It was quite an impressive brand location and uh, quite hard to get through. 
In second place, we have Aaron. They created a fun vibe with their resort location, had good player leading, and some fun mechanics that they included toward the end of their missions. That was a nice surprise. And finally, we have our winner, Camilla. They created one of my favorite locations, the Botanical Gardens. It shows some great sight lines and a good player leading, which was uh, really important for me as a level designer. To and great technical expertise in their debugging and uh, the way they introduce their gameplay mechanics. There you have it. Congratulations to everyone, to our top three. And thank you so much, Anish. Now we'll hear from our winner, Camilla. I am honored to be here today to receive first place in the Ubisoft Next Level Design Challenge. I would like to thank Ubisoft Toronto and the Next team for organizing such an incredible way for us to showcase our work. And congratulations to the rest of the winners and participants. This challenge was quite an undertaking and we should all be proud of what we have accomplished. A special thank you to my parents and my sister for being wonderful as always to my boyfriend for all of his support, and to the playtesters who dedicated time to help me achieve this goal. I am truly grateful and very excited for the next steps. Thank you. All right, folks, we've made it to the very end. It's our sixth discipline programming. How exciting. I have Gavin on board here and he's with one of our judges. So Gavin's actually been a part of Ubisoft Toronto for 10 years and has been a part of Next since the start of programming. So when programming is introduced as a discipline, Gavin, how has that experience been like? It's been absolutely incredible to be involved with Next on the programming side. Uh, we've had increased the challenge year on year and we've seen the students really rise to that and produce some amazing work. It's the quality has been fantastic and it's great to see the students work showcased. Amazing. And we are going to get to showcase the work of those students this year again. But uh, Gavin, can you take us through in your own words? I know it's a big one, but what programming is? Yes, you're right. It's a big subject. Um, really, it's the backbone of what the game is built on. It brings everything together. It makes it all work. And really it's about enabling the content creators and the, the designers to bring their visions to life. And on top of that, we're also responsible for crafting the, the interface with the player and be really very close to what the player experiences and, and make that shine. And that's a joy, a joy to do. Awesome. So we're going to actually roll the finalist reel. And can you tell us more about what it was that you asked the students for this year's programming challenge? We love setting retro arcade games as a challenge. And this year we chose Gravatar. And the idea is to allow the students to really concentrate on player controls, on AI, on physics and also to keep things simple and allow them to focus on the fundamentals. So we provide a simple, basic API and give the students freedom to express themselves within that. And we're looking for good code structure, well thought out, clear, robust. We're looking for a technical challenge, the, an ambitious feature set, and for them to use advanced techniques and, and use them well. And then finally, we're looking at innovation, trying to get them to, to look at unique solutions on the programming side and also novel gameplay. Wow, lots of good things to look out for. And now this is it, y'all, the final award. Gavin, tell us who the winners are for programming. In third place, we have Tamalan. Tamalan approaches their code from a design enabling direction. They started from how levels would be edited and, and built the game from there. So they made a really fun and complex game in a short amount of time. Really impressive. In second place, we have Miles. They took our sprite and line drawing API and converted it into a 3D shaded rendering engine. That's an impressive feat in itself. And they developed a really thoughtful reflection system and use that in their entity component system. 
and use that then to build a game in 3D where you fly into planets and shoot enemies on the planets. Really good. And then our winner, Victor. They put together a very detailed and complete engine with lots of great core features like an entity component system, memory pools, unit tests, CICD, particle effects, and rendering with lighting and backface color. The game had a great feel and, and was really fun to play. And that truly cemented their place as the winner of Next Program. Amazing, Gavin. Congratulations to everyone. Gavin, thank you so much. It's such a pleasure speaking with you. And now let's hear from our programming winner. Hi, everyone. My name is Victor Soya Shi. I'm very happy to be the winner of this year's programming challenge. Learning C++ over the last couple of months was really tough, and there were many times I wanted to give up, but I kept practicing until I could make a game I'd be proud of. So when I got the news that I won, it felt like a huge relief because my efforts paid off. To everyone doing the challenge next year, keep working hard and I'm sure you'll do well. For my submission, I really wanted to have a simple but action-packed game. I knew 3D graphics would be important, as well as efficient programming patterns. The gameplay also needed to be engaging, and I ended up taking a lot of inspiration from a game called Lovers in a Dangerous Space Time. Now, I am looking forward to working with a talented team at Ubisoft Toronto. I still have a lot left to learn, but everyone I've met at the studio has been very helpful and welcoming. Finally, I want to thank the judges who selected me and my friends and family who supported me throughout. Thank you so much. Wow, what a show it has been. We got to see lots of amazing works from all six disciplines. We heard from the judges. We heard from the winners. So much exciting things happening. What a great show. Let's call back in Tanvi to help close out the show. Hey, Tanvi, what an amazing ride. Is there any final words you'd like to share? Yes, I have lots. I will start by congratulating all of our winners. Uh, we are so excited to have you start with us. Um, to all the participants, thank you so much for taking part in Next this year and congratulations on your fantastic work and the progress that you have made. It is not easy to put in so much work into a submission during the academic year and yet you gave it your all. So no matter where you placed, you have shown tremendous potential and we hope this has been a valuable experience for you. We welcome and encourage you to participate again. Um, to all of our academic partners, you have been a strong pillar of support and have encouraged students year over year to participate in NEXT. This competition could not have succeeded without your support. Big thank you to all of you as well. And to everyone in the studio, we are a dream team. Um, the communications team who make everything possible day in and day out. All of our judges who put in so much time and effort in creating the briefs, in making sure all of the submissions are reviewed in great detail and are so invested in the development of all of the participants. And last but not the least, my team, the workforce planning team, who are always so supportive and as embarrassed as she will be, I do need to single out Lena because she has really done so much of the heavy lifting in organizing the competition this year. So a big shout out and a big thank you to everyone that has been involved. Thank you so much, Tanvi. I hope you all enjoyed the show and hopefully we'll see you next year. Bye.